And today I'm joined by a very special guest. He's a British business legend. He's built up an extremely successful chain of jewellery stores. His actions earned himself the title Sultan of Bling. He once described his own goods with a four-letter word that brought down his empire. At the height of his accessory business, he had 2,500 stores and he has taken up cycling as a hobby and he now works as a mentor for up-and-coming businesses. Remember this clip. We also do this uh, nice sherry decanter. It's cut glass and it comes complete with six glasses on a silver-plated tray that your butler could uh, bring you in and serve you drinks on. And it's really only cost £4.95. pence. People say to me, how can you sell this for such a low price? I say because it's total crap. Well, that was Gerald Ratner. A big moment there, but I'm joined now by today's businessman and motivational speaker, Gerald Ratner, and his business partner, Natalie Bailey. Gerald, I hope you're not upset at me showing you that clip. I would be disappointed if you didn't. I don't think I've ever done an interview where somebody hasn't shown it. So talk to me then about your business, because uh, by all accounts it started, it was a family business, wasn't it, that evolved? It was a family business. Um, it was losing money. I changed it somewhat. And uh, we then it was a very successful new formula where we... The, the demographics were such at the time when young people had the money, unlike today when it's the older people. It was the 16, 24s, and we weren't really attracting the, those people. So we changed the formula. Instead of selling expensive diamond rings, we were doing earrings and chains and 99p earrings and stuff like that. And it was hugely successful, which allowed us to actually expand and then acquire a lot of the jewellers in the UK, including Watch the Switzerland, H. Samuel, Ernest Jones, Leslie Davis. In fact, we, we got it up to 50% of the market and we were one of the few retailers to succeed uh, over the other side of the Atlantic with a 1,000 shops there. But then, of course, I made the speech that you just saw. I know, but it was, I, I actually watched it first time round, so I, I remember seeing it the first yes. time. And I, I, I kind of thought, oh, no, why has he said that? But let's go back a bit and let's talk about your family life and, and your family and wh where you grew up and more about you, because people see that, they don't really get to mm. find out more about you. So what about you? Where, where were you born? Where did you grow up? What, what was your schooling like? What was your life like? My schooling wasn't very good, I have to say. I was expelled. Were you? Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, I, went to, I passed my 11 plus, but then I went to a grammar school uh, with 33 people in the class, which didn't really agree with me. Mm. Uh, and I didn't agree with them. And uh, I came last, unfortunately. Really? And in those days, they could actually fire you through saying that you're just, you know, stupid. And uh, nowadays, they'd put a label on you and say you're dyslexic or something like that. But in, in those days, they just got rid of me. Um, so I worked in the family business, which was fairly small at the time I left school. Was it a jewellery business? The it was a jewellery business, it? yeah, but it was a loss-making business that was very posh. All the jewellers in those days were very posh, and they weren't really... There was a threshold barrier. Young people didn't want to go into them. Where, whereabout was that? Was it in London? Was that outside? Well, I was born in Richmond, okay. and uh, that was where the first shop was. And um, my father and mother worked in the shop, and my mother reminded me that she worked there when I, she was pregnant with me, so you could say it was in my blood, the jewellery business and retail. Do you, do you have brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have. I've got uh, two sisters. And what, what do they do? What do they do? They... Um, well, they're getting quite old now, and uh, they're not doing a lot, I don't think. I think I still keep... I see them quite a lot, but one of them did very well. She was doing what Nasty was doing, sort of property stuff, and the other one has emigrated to Israel and retired. Mm. So, so let's talk about that moment, then, when, when you made that comment. Talk to me about that moment. What, 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 what happened in the aftermath? I mean, what was the first sort of thing that happened? Well, firstly, I... I you know, I, 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 I was very honoured to be invited to the Albert Hall with 6,000 people and uh, I, I was advised to put a couple of jokes. I'm not blaming the person who advised me, but it, it didn't have those jokes in initially. So I put those jokes in and that's exactly what they were, jokes. Uh, and everybody at the Albert Hall on that day felt that there was nothing untoward. I meet people that were there in 1991. But, of course, I shouldn't have said it. And uh, then it was misreported or disingenuously reported, if you like, by the press, saying that I said it about all my jewellery, when, in fact, it was just that one item, a sherry decanter. Mm. And the other uh, part of the speech, which you can see on YouTube, I actually said we sell high-quality products sold by high-quality staff. 
Uh, but we do have this one product, uh, a sherry decade, a non-jewellery item. But, of course, to this day, and on Twitter, it's always referred to that I said that everything, all my products are crap. And that, unfortunately, um, went down, um, you know, into everybody's psyche. And, of course, uh, from being hugely successful, mm. we'd announced profits of £125 million the day before. We were going for £200 million. Um, nobody came in our shops. Um, it was just... Uh, Absolutely. It was before social media, but it was an absolute disaster. God, there's a taste of things to come, wasn't it, really? What social media can do to people. Yeah. Well, yeah. You did, it, was, it was over the garden fence in those mm. days and in the pub, but it had the same effect. Mm. So from there, how did you pick yourself up? Because you're, you're doing yeah. okay. Well, the thing was that um, it took me quite a while. I basically gave up and I didn't want to play anymore and uh, I was sort of just sitting at home doing nothing. But my wife said to me that you have to get out there, um, otherwise she was threatening me <laughs> with goodness knows what. Well. I don't blame her. Um, so I was do just to get out of the house, I was doing cycling, and that was making me feel much better about myself, which I still do to this day. I cycle 25 miles a day. Wow. And uh, I really enjoyed it, and I could see the benefits of health and fitness. I know everybody talks about it now, but this was 1997. So um, I felt I wanted to go into that business. I could, you know, I could see that the benefits that... Uh, the, dealt with in terms of the stress that I had and I had real reasons to be stressful because mm. I'd lost everything and uh, so I opened up a health club cut a long story short uh, it was very successful and I had no money I sort of blagged my way into selling memberships before I actually signed on the lease but then I got people to sign up and I sold it for four million pounds two years later um, which was a wonderful feeling after what I'd been mm. through yeah. Um, so then I went back into the jewellery business online, built up a £25 million business, and then started doing talks, which I never thought I would make a living doing speeches after the disastrous speech that I made. But I do to this day, and I can do sort of 40, 50 all over the world a year, uh, which I really enjoy. And um, during the pandemic, when I wasn't doing any speeches, I started doing the mentoring, mm -hmm. uh, which has led to working with Natalie now. Well, let's bring Natalie in. Natalie, hello. Thank you very much for joining us. This is Natalie Bailey. She works with Gerald. Um, so, Natalie, talk to me about how you met Gerald and, and what, what your what your sort of. Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting story, actually. We met in Dubai on a mastermind retreat that my mum and I were on um, to better our business, our property business, and Gerald was a guest mentor. So, me being me, I've gone and made friends. <laughs> I just went and plonked myself next to him. I was like, hello. <laughs> um, and then, then thereafter, we went to the, the one next year and Gerald was the mentor there. That was the Cayman Islands. The Cayman Islands, yes. Very nice. These are, mm. these are nice places. So the Cayman <laughs> Islands was actually fantastic. It was amazing, wasn't it? Um, and we had brunch at the Brits and got, got to know each other better. And then Gerald became a guest mentor at my retreats. So we, um, that's how we met. So what, what are your retreats then? Well, what, what do they do? What yeah, do so we do health, wealth and happiness. So as Gerald was saying about how health is so important, my background's personal training, so we have an affinity together there. So we look at physical, mental, spiritual health, doing different kinds of activities and excursions, um, but also looking at your business plan for the next 12 months and beyond. And also what, what makes you happy, because life's too short to be miserable. So we look at, you know, why, why are you doing what you're doing? Does it, does it bring you joy? Does it make you happy? Um, and people love it because they, they really start to see and enjoy life. Mm. Well, what would you say, um, Gerald, to people who sort of look at someone like you, they see that you're successful? I mean, obviously, you've had your ups and downs, but you've pulled yourself back up. So there must be some sort of formula in it because it's almost like, you, you, you know, you go bankrupt, but then you find a formula. Yeah. And there's a formula. What would you say is that formula? Because well, I, I, I want to know it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's actually another myth that I went bankrupt. But anyway, the thing is... Yeah, No, but the thing is that um, people do say to me, um, what is the secret of building a successful business? Because I've built three or four. And um, I say to them, this is totally ridiculous, there is no formula mm. for building a successful business. But the people that have been successful in business, have learnt from their mistakes, like I have. Uh, that is certainly one thing. But it is, there's no, you know, the, the Gerald of Friends, which we have together now, and we've got a lot of people that belong to our club that we do mentoring, we say to them that it's not a quick, get-rich-quick mm. scheme. It, it's just like if you wanted to be a 
doctor or if you wanted to be a lawyer, it's a good seven years apprentice and you then learn from the bottom upwards and then you reap the rewards. Now you say you didn't go bankrupt, so let's correct that. You didn't go bankrupt, though, because no. a lot of people say that. OK, they do. So, but, they do. But, but you kind of hit rock bottom for you. Oh, I definitely lost all my money mm. um, and was pretty well depressed. But, no, I didn't uh, go bankrupt. And although it does say that on Twitter all the time, which is a big problem to me, because when I went back in the jewellery business, you cannot deal with diamonds mm. unless, if you've been bankrupt. So, But they, I could list out 20... I'm not sitting here moaning about it because it's my own fault, but I could list out 20 in things that are not factual that, they, that they're said continually on Twitter, but I think that's sort of par for the course. Yeah, that's Twitter for you, isn't it? Yeah, I thought that the, the uh, tabloids were bad at the time, the sound of the mirror being disingenuous, but it's nothing compared to social media. Yeah, you don't think. <laughs> <laughs> so, Natalie, as you talked to me a little bit, we've talked a little bit about your business, is this something that people can get on board and, and, and take part in? Is that what...? Oh, definitely. So, Gerald Ratner and Friends, um, it's geraldratner.com, if anybody wants to... Go and have a look. Um, we, we do online mentoring once a week, every Thursday. Um, and we do different topics. We cover different parts of business, parts of life, um, masterminding around their business, what struggles are they having so that they can move forward. And um, it's a really nice network of people. It's really important to spend time with people that are lifting and inspiring you and wanting you to achieve more and, and being able to help yourself and help others. And so it's a really great group of people if you want to better your life and business. And yeah. finally, John, if you have a pearl of wisdom to pass on to someone, what would it be? Don't give up, I would think, because, uh, you know, you will get knocked down. Um, that's always going to happen in life. Uh, but you do meet somebody that uh, hasn't had a setback and there's some lack of empathy, lack of sympathy in mm. them. I think to be part of the human race, you have to have suffered somewhat. Mm. Gerald Ratner, such a pleasure to talk to you. Natalie Thank you. Bailey. Thank you. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you for having us. And, of course, is Gerald Ratner, the legendary Gerald, and, of course, Natalie Bailey.